Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to St. Charles. We come together this evening to remember, to honor the lives of all of those who were buried from St. Charles this past year. We welcome all gathered here this night. In this most difficult year during which some families were not able to have funeral masses when their loved ones died, we take time tonight to pray in a special way for all of those whom we have lost. For all of the loved ones of the departed who've gathered here or who may be watching, we pray that this Mass will be a time of healing and comfort that is long overdue. So tonight, in a special way, we remember all of the following. Elizabeth Albanese, Viola Armini, Gloria Bailey, Dale Baker, Julia Barnes, Carmel Bachman, Mary Berardi, Robert Barassi, Margaret Burton, James Booth, Ray Brummer, June Bushling, Eileen Kavanaugh, Genevieve Schlumelewski, Michael P. Chiquillo, Albert Clare, David Collins, Alberta Constance, Bernard Conway, Ronald DeBelliac, Carolyn DeGeorge, Edward De Gregorio, Louis Donardo Jr., Jean Doyle, Donna Trebecki, Sarah Sally Drebet, Nancy Dujo, James Dunn, John Farina, John Ferraro, Alice Flynn, Florence Forsyth, Eileen Freida, Jean Gioldi, Patrick Gennetti, Carol Grope, Josephine Hooper, Lena Hauser, Anita Houston, Felix Iarusi, Josephine Ingram, Carol Ivan, Frank Kabalchik, Raymond Lanzo, Virginia Laskanik, Thomas Loney, Margaret Magmore, Anna Mangiarelli, Randy McBride, Harold Michael, Ron Mistovich, Thomas Murphy, Anne Oakley, Edward Onderko, Joyce Overly, Joseph Petrick, Rosemary Pinney, Paul Poldergotch, Eleanor Ramson, Rosemary Reardon, Lawrence Reiser, Larry Sammartino, Andrew Samuels, Jr., Russell Sarkis, Hilde Shadell, Margaret Schneider, Thomas Shutrump, Eileen Slanina, Robert Sikorsi, John Stabil, Joseph Sternagel, William Sweeney, Joanne Sweeney, Arthur Thomas, Betty Thompson, Richard T. Catch, Jack Valley, Mary Wilson, 
Eleanor Yaborski, and Carl Sorosky. Please stand and join in singing How Great Thou Art. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if before men, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. 
chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. A reading to the letter from, to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life for if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be reunited with him in the resurrection. 
we know that our old self was sacrificed with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus arrived in Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> After my mother died, we gave my niece her car, and as Beth was preparing to take the car away, she opened the trunk of the car, and there she found all of my mother's cemetery cemetery tools still in the trunk. Beginning after my brother's death in 1974 and going clear through 2006, my mother would tend the graves of her family so that in the trunk of her car were all that she needed for her personal mission of keeping the graves looking neat and cared for, leaving no doubt that someone was definitely missing those departed. There was a small garden shovel and a trowel, a miniature rake, some garden clippers, and two large watering cans, plus towels, a sponge, gloves, and an old shirt that she put on over her clean clothes. All of her items assembled in her trunk, even in that very last year of her life, though she never had a chance to use them. 
She kept her cemetery tools at hand as she used them nearly every season. She would plant flowers in the spring, trim the edges around the headstone, wipe the headstones clean, and keep those flowers watered, regardless of how dry the summer might get, dragging filled watering cans from ever, whatever dispenser the cemetery happened to have. If one of the plants died, she would replace it. Then in the fall, she removed the flowers that had withered and prepared the plots to receive new ones in the spring. This went on for over 30 years, as it was her own personal method of mourning. It was her ritual of remembrance. In spite of the great example she left, none of her children carried on her traditions, as we have found other ways of remembering all of those who have gone before us. We gather this day for a different method of mourning. We gather for a different ritual of remembrance, which certainly doesn't make one right and the other wrong. When it comes to our personal response to the death of a loved one, there just is no right or wrong. Just as each and every one of us gathered here this evening feels the loss of someone differently than anyone else, even if we share them in the same family, just as we all experience a loss differently, so too we mourn that loss in our own way. We come to this church this very darkened evening because of the change of the clocks so that we might find some comfort and solace gathering with others who also remember their loved ones who have been taken from them in the course of this past year. As individuals, as families, as a parish, we take this moment to give voice to our continued sorrow, to take a collective moment of mourning, and also to remind ourselves that in that sorrow and in our mourning, we are not alone. There are others who share a most similar grief. There are others as well who, to the very best of their ability, share our grief with us. And there is our God on whose shoulder we can always lean. And even though we are all too painfully aware that no one can bear our burden of grief, yet we also can find comfort in the knowledge that others are here with us, praying God to send us the strength, displaying their own desire to be of help, and also reminding us to know and to remember that in their own way, through their own methods of getting through the darkness of death and the pain of separation, whatever their method might have been, even those who spend hours tending graves, we are aided with the knowledge that as they have, with the help, grace, strength of their God, with the knowledge that through the love of God, they have made their way through their most difficult times, so can we, so will we find our way through this time of sorrow. Confident that God listens to us in our need, let us now offer our petition. For all of our deceased of this past year, that they be admitted to the company of saints in heaven, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, for all who have helped us, 
that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who mourn the loss of a loved one, that they find comfort and strength in the hope of the resurrection, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that all may be gathered together again in the joys of God's kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions which we hold deep in our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you wish always to hear us. Grant these our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. In a 
similar way. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that he should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Regardless of how strange a year we are passing through, the pain of death still touches families deeply. I would like to thank all of those who have helped with our bereavement ministry in the course of the past year. It's been hit and miss, mostly miss, but I thank all of those who helped in any way. Please remember on your way out of church today to take a rose with you as a remembrance of your loved one. Everyone is invited to take a rose on their way out of church this evening. Let us all stand and pray. Grant, O oh Lord, that your departed servants for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament may pass over to a dwelling place of eternal light and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our concluding hymn is On Eagle's Wings. Mm -hmm. 